Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Mark Andrew. I'm part of the WordPress training team. I'm here today with my co-host Wes. We're going to take a deeper dive into making a website from a mobile device only. We're going to be working mostly in the mobile browser today, and we'll jump into the WordPress app itself a little bit. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. Please uh, post them. I'll check in periodically. Uh, we'll take a, a few pauses throughout, and Wes will be monitoring the chat as well. Um, all thoughts are welcome other than questions. So if you see something you think I could do better or just a different way of doing something, feel free to throw that in as well. I'm here to learn just as much as everyone else, I hope. Uh, we are going to go keep it a little looser today. The first uh, part one of this mobile site online workshop, which the link will be in the chat. We, we had a pretty tight structure and we put all the building blocks in place of our website. So we know the foundation is solid. Um, so today we're going to explore further by creating a homepage and a contact page and a portfolio page. And we're gonna do it in a few different ways on each one. And I will step through them fairly quickly, but that quickness I think will also illustrate how easy it can be if you trust in what is there and learn how to use it, which is why we're all here. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start sharing my screen now. And as a reminder, uh, I am on mobile phones. So this is uh, why I'm teaching this workshop. So you won't be seeing my face in the video anymore. Uh, due to screen size, and here we go. All right. Well, Andrew, so on my mobile I phone, I have my workspace, which we set up in part one, which has all the steps that we needed to walk through. And we determined what our website pages were, which was a welcome, a blog, a contact, a portfolio, and the privacy policy. So today we are going to jump into designing and building. And everything you see up here at the top from admin down to plugins to adding pages was covered in workshop one. So let's dive into our page content. And this is what we're going to go over today. We're gonna to use a theme pattern. So a pattern directly from the theme that we have installed to, to make our home page. And then we'll recreate that ourselves just by putting the blocks in. Then we're gonna use uh, a pattern from the pattern directory for our contact slash about page. Then we're going to use just the editor itself. So just we're going to pull up our portfolio page and use just the editor and the blocks and put them in one at a time ourselves. Um, we're going to speak on saving your patterns so you can reuse them. And then we're going to jump to the app for some changes. Any questions before I begin? Is Okay, awesome. So we're gonna pull up our website and we are starting with a bit blank slate. So we have the building blocks we put in place. We put our fonts in, we picked our color palette. I'm gonna pull up the site editor to show. We're gonna click on templates and we're gonna click on page. So as you see here in our template sidebar. This controls the look of all the pages that we assign to these templates. So our 404 page will have a 404 template assigned to it. 
And if we want to change that, we would do that here. Zoom back out. So for us, we're going to go with our page. And we're just going to zoom in here. So a page as the name denotes would, could, would be the template for any page on your site that you didn't assign to a different template. So I usually jump to here when I want to check out my styles. And we're going to go to typography and just see what we put in real quick. For our headings, we changed our font to Jakarta and we changed the appearance to make it bold. And we also did that for our color palette. which gives us the site we have now without the content. So we're on our homepage. We're gonna start right here. There's two ways you can approach this. And one is to edit the page directly. And I can do that from my homepage itself by clicking the pencil icon at the top, or I can go to pages, my homepage and edit. The other method in what we're going to do today so we can explore those templates a little more is we're going to go to the site editor by clicking edit site. I'll zoom back in. And we're going to go to our templates and Zoom out so we can go to manage all templates. Now we have this option here, which is add new. So I'm going to add a new template and I'm going to select my front page because I want my front page to be completely different than any other page on my website. I want the header to be different, the footer. I want this just to be its own thing. So I'll pick a front page template and you see now it's in the list below. So we'll go to our template and it's gonna give me the option to start with something that the, fee, the theme itself is offering me or I can start blank and I'm going to start blank. And the first option, we're going to use is a theme pattern. So the theme I have installed is Frost. I'm on my front page template that I just created, and I'm going to add a pattern. So if I go to featured, and actually I'm going to zoom back out so you can see again, we started blank. I click the plus button at the top left, or you could click the plus button next to choose a block. I went to my featured pattern. And this is going to drop down everything that this theme is providing. So when you see the patterns here, just be aware this is not um, from extra plugins. This is not from extra code. This is what the theme that you're installing when you're using just the default core WordPress and a block theme is giving you. So this is what the theme author put together. So they put together their own bunch of blocks that they thought worked really well and they put a bunch of time and effort into this. So I like to start here. So for our home page, we are going to go right here and I'm just going to select by tapping. And if I collapse the sidebar, our blank page, we take a view at it. All right, so we need to refresh so I can do the mobile. 
And there we go. So that took, even with the explanation, two minutes. And our homepage went from absolutely blank to this. A thought I've come across or uh, feedback I've gotten from many often is that they don't necessarily trust what gets put there and they feel that uh, um, a lot more design has to go in to make it uh, professional. So for comparison, I'd like to show you quickly another website that has the same color palette as the one we just created, which is this right here called Pressable. Full disclosure, this is my hosting company. This is not a plug for them. I'm just using the aesthetics from this website. So if we zoom in, what we'll see here is an H1, powerful WordPress hosting. We'll see a sticky nav. So the menu at the top here stays as I scroll. We have two buttons below that, an image, this is a group block with a column block inside, another image, and more headings. So we'll zoom back out. But you see this really neat way there, this blue in the center is with the borders that have a radius on them at the top left and the bottom right. So let us go back to our website. Let me close out the other pages here. And we are going to mimic that. But do you see how close that is almost to start? So again, what, what we have with WordPress itself, when you install it and you start using uh, the patterns that it gives you or exploring patterns yourself and learn the blocks and the underlying what's making these, as we pull up the site editor, it'll be much easier to show you. I know that was quick. I'm not trying to help you have you fall along. I just want to illustrate this point by going here. So all this content here, if we pull up our sidebar, is really three groups. We have a header that contains more. We have a group in the middle that contains our post content, and we have a footer at the bottom. So we're going to go back to our site, and we're going to make our homepage look almost exactly like this homepage very quickly. So I'm going to edit my page by clicking the pencil icon at the top. Uh, and again, I should have explained this up front. Uh, the zoomed out view, I'm using more here so everyone can see what's going on because mobile currently, a lot of the menus and sidebars will be hidden for space considerations, obviously. So we're going to take our welcome. So this would have been our homepage. We're going to start again. We're going to throw our pattern in. We're going to go to featured. We're going to pick that homepage pattern. And then we're going to pull up our list view to see what's actually here. So we have three groups of blocks together. And if we see on this site that there's spacing in between these blocks, we're going to do the same here. So I have my first group selected. I'm going to dive in further and see what's there for blocks. So no groups in that one, that's by itself. So I am going to go to the more settings. And with my group selected, I'm going to click on the right, which will give me all of my padding and margin options. 
And if we zoom in here, we can see that there's no space. If we see the top margin is set to zero at the top. So I'm just going to take that out. And I'm going to do the same for the padding. And we'll just take that out. And I want to give it some space between that and the block below it. So let's zoom back out and see where we're at. And I'm actually going to go to highlight view. So spotlight mode. So you can see exactly what block we're working on. And I'm going to go to top toolbar to get that out of the way. And we'll drop it back down. So this is the block we're working on right now. Up at the top. So I took the margin and the padding out. So now it's to the default group level. And I'm going to change this by clicking the icon at the top from full width to wide width. So this is going to give us that space. on the sides. Now I'm going to jump back over here. I'm going to click on for my styles again here, and we are going to add a shadow by clicking shadow. And that looks pretty good, except it has square borders or sharp corners, I should say. And if we see here, we have this rounded look. So I'm gonna jump back over to here and we'll zoom in. And I'm gonna go down to my radius and I'm gonna click on to the right here, which will give me the option for all four corners. So if I adjust my radius here with that engaged, and let's say we make it 100. That's going to shift every corner here and give it a curve. So that's not the look I want. So we are going to undo that. And we are going to make our top left corner We'll give it 40 pixels. We are going to leave this sharp, bottom left, top right, and then the bottom right, we'll give it that 40 as well. Now, if we pull that back up, we see our block here has that one corner. And once we get the padding, we're going to update. I'm going to pull up the sidebar. So I need to get rid of the padding and the margin here as well. And I'll do this easily here just by going to dimensions, clicking on the kebab. And you see here, this is padding, spacing, margin, and height. And there's an option to reset all. So instead of going through each setting one by one, I just want to start with default. I hit that. Now, if I pull back up to the main block, you'll see it has all the padding around it. And if we preview it in mobile view and shrink down, we'll see that this block right here Looks like that block right there. And we'll update. And I'm going to jump back to my home page. So that was one way of putting in my home page just by using 
uh, the fee pattern that came with it. And as you saw, I could easily adjust it to we'll go to desktop view. We'll take it off of spotlight mode so we can see to easily adjust it to mimic another site. And we are going to, so a theme pattern for the homepage. Now we're going to use a, a pattern from the theme directory for our contact page. So if this was my own homepage, obviously I would just continue with the editing and I would put my own content in and I would update. I would click save. And in a matter of minutes, you would have a professional looking homepage. So we're gonna explore this option on our contact page right now by going to pages, all pages and contact. And I'm going to pause here and check in with Wes for questions. I know that was a lot of info and I jumped around a lot, especially with the screen zooming in and out. Um, but I'm trying to toe the line between giving you as much view of exactly what's going on and where we are in the editor while showing you what I actually do on the mobile side without zooming in. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so we haven't had any specific questions. Um, I just mentioned that um, I also use dimensions a lot these days to, um, you know, to meet my design needs. Um, so I think it was it was great seeing how you how you use those in literally like five minutes to achieve what you wanted to achieve. Thank you, and thank you for the feedback, Wes. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to explain that uh, or explore that, excuse me, a little more right now. And I just want to, I'm going to jump back to the beginning of my presentation for myself, which was the main points I wanted to share, which was everything is a block. As you see, if, if you think of it as Legos and you're basically giving everything a big group hug, right? So a group block, a big group hug that keeps everything inside. And then when you think of those blocks that you have, those Legos that you have as a pattern, everything is just a collection of blocks put together in different orders. But the types of blocks we use, you'll see are almost universal in design. And let me illustrate that really quick with our contact page. So let's pretend this is our contact page. So what I see here as I went through before is an H1, I see buttons and image. If we dive down here, this is a media and text block, media on the left, text on the right. This is a media and text block. We have a lot in common, text on the left, media on the right. So what the pattern is, is basically just saving these blocks so it's easier to put in in the future. But let's just put those in right now. So I want a heading. So I'm going to go shortcut. We'll just do hashtag, which will give me an H1. And we'll say mimicking other site. And I'm going to click on my H1 at the top, the menu, and I'm going to align that center. Now I'm going to zoom in real quick here. And I'm going to go to my typography right here, size. And we're going to make this, we'll go 60 and bigger, OK? Let me jump back over and see what we have. So we have an H1, 
we have a power graph and we have buttons. So there's our H1. I'm gonna hit the return key and let's call, this is my groovy paragraph. And we'll center align that as well. Below that, I can just tap. And I can tap right here to choose a block. So another shortcut is the forward slash, which will give me a list. And as I type, start typing, and I believe I wanted buttons, which I don't see, so we'll go buttons and click on buttons. And we have another uh, groovy button. Right. And we're going to select our parent block, which is these the buttons, because if we pull up our sidebar here, we'll see that the single button, hold that, gives us the options to change the link in the text here, but the button blocks, the buttons block itself gives us the option for multiple buttons there. So that's where I want to be working. And if we check on our pressable on our other website, we'll see the buttons are center aligned. So let us put in our second button by clicking the plus and we'll say, seating. And we're going to go to our styles over here and we're going to make that an outline by clicking on outline. And now I'm going to jump back up to my buttons and center align them by clicking alignment here and then center. And I want the buttons to go horizontal and I don't want them to wrap multiple lines. So I'm gonna take that off. So now I have an H1, a paragraph, two buttons, one outlined. Exactly like that, right? Image underneath block, group block, media. So always work from the list view so you know where you're at. Make sure you're at the right spot. So I'm at the buttons block. And after this, I'm going to insert after. And we're just going to put our media and text button on here. Uh, block, I apologize. So we have our media on left, text on right. And for our image, we're gonna go from our image library. And since the 6.2 release, you'll see we have the options for open verse as well as there, pixels. And if you had your Google Photos, if you connected your accounts, that would be there as well. So we're gonna go to our media library. We're going to pick one of our cool WordPress photos we have. I like this one. And we're going to hit the bottom right select button here and insert. And then on the right, we would put in our groovy content. And we would have an image. We would have this. Right. So they have media on left, text on right, and then they have it reversed. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my media and text block. Click the cabal menu and I'm going to duplicate. So I have the same thing here. We zoom in. And if you see at the top menu, all I have to do is change the side by clicking there. So now I have a media on left and a media on right, and we've just mimicked what they've had here. And I would click update. When I was done, and we would have
the other site. back up to desktop. So for this, for our contact page, we're going to use a pattern again. We're just going to get it from a different place. And what I like to do is when I find patterns, I really like when I am building my web pages and I have my patterns here for my content collection you'll see I have patterns that I want to put there. So this is what it looks like in the code side of your website when if you switch to code editor mode, and I can show you that in one second. And the pattern that we got came from here, which is wordpress.org slash patterns. And what I did is I typed in the search and I typed for an about. And then I found this really cool pattern that I liked from Sampat Viro or Viral. And then I clicked the copy pattern button. And if I share this, you'll see this is what it looks like. It's that same code that we just saw. But if I go back to my website and I will show you the code side. So if we jump into right here in the editor, we can go to the code editor. This is where your code is living. So we paste what we got from that about page. And we exit the code editor by clicking exit code editor. And let's preview that. And just as a heads up, uh, so this desktop view, even though I'm in it is, is shrunk because it's a mobile device. I'm going to give you the actual view, which is a landscape. So I'm going to tilt my screen just for one second, because this is what it would actually look like on a desktop. And we'll tilt back. I'm going to go back to my original page. Let's close out the other views for simplicity's sake. And we'll pull my preview box back up. And now if we open our sidebar, we'll see we have a group. And then what was put in there. But if you notice, once again, paragraph, column, group, images, headers. The building blocks, again, are so similar that once you start seeing the patterns, as I hope I showed you in this demonstration, it's very easy to recreate this for yourself. So for us, we are actually going to call that good. I would obviously, I would change the text that was here. I would add my own images. But that is how quickly you could have a full-fledged page that you could either call good start with as a template, or again, just using these patterns, pulling up the list view and seeing what they're made of. If I zoom into the column block, how did they, how did they put this together? These, I can see exactly right there. It's just a column block. And I just added a paragraph and I added an image and an image and I just repeated. So I'm going to pause right there and check in once again for any questions. No questions at the moment, but I'm happy for folks to type a question while, while you pause and wait. Awesome. Yeah, while you're doing that, I'm going to show you 
I'm going to do the exact same thing in five seconds <laughs> without the code part. So we're, we're on our contact page. And I wanted to add a pattern below this. So I would pull up my pattern. I copied my pattern. And right from here, I'm just going to click paste. That's it. The exact same page, all the same content. And we'll update and we'll visit our site. And no questions then. Awesome. <laughs> all right. We're going to go to the last page for today, which is our portfolio page. So I'm on the back end of my website. I'm going to go to pages and all pages. And we see we don't have a portfolio page. So we're going to create one. So I can either click add new on pages or I can click the plus icon at the top of any screen, which will give me an option. So for our last page, we're going to create it from scratch, which is beginning with the title. And I'm just going to publish that real quick so I can jump up to desktop view so we can see. So now we have a portfolio page. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if someone already put a good amount of effort and work into helping me out. So I'm gonna to go to patterns. And if we see here, I do have portfolio. So these again are provided by the theme, the featured text, testimonials, and default 2023 theme that is installed with WordPress has its own patterns. They look different than these, but it has its own patterns for headers for footers. So I'm going to look under portfolio and I see we have just one very basic design. So I actually, I don't like that, not for my portfolio page, so we're gonna start from scratch. And since I absolutely want scratch, I'm going to change the template for this page by going over to our settings for our page. And if you see the template here, it says page. I want to start blank. So blank means exactly that. There's no header, there's no footer, there's nothing here that's being pulled from the templates we set up earlier. Over here in our template part. So now I'm on the page and I'm using that blank template from the template section. And for our portfolio, I'm gonna pull from my blog posts. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a group in to give everything a big hug and keep it inside because I wanna adjust that spacing and that padding on the outside of the group from the side of my screen. So we're going to start right here. And now I'm going to throw in a query loop. And we're going to start blank. Even though it's blank, you see it gives me title and date. It gives me multiple options. So I am going to go with image. And if we zoom into the top, since this is a portfolio page, I want the images to be the highlight. I want a grid view. So I'm gonna switch that by clicking on the grid at the top. And I want it to show 20 of my photos. So we're going to put 20 in there. And now I'm going to pull up my list view so we know where we're working again. And I wanna to go to my query loop. And for our columns, let's go with four. 
so we have we'll have four columns going across and all our other settings we'll leave for now this would obviously it we can adjust when if we have our most recent photos our favorite photos if we wanted to do it any way we wanted if we had photos that we wanted to stick to the top like any other blog post for our portfolio or i guess our portfolio could be anything I'm, i was assuming for photography but so we'll zoom back out and we'll update and let us preview our portfolio page. And you'll see there's not much there because we have no content. So I'm going to zoom in for this one. And we're going to jump to a plugin we touched on in the first workshop. And I'm going to show you how to use it very quickly, which is called Faker Press. So at the bottom of my screen here, I have Faker Press already installed. And I'm going to go to posts. So this is a free plugin, the WordPress repository, and all this just puts in content up for your site while you're designing, right? So it puts in blog posts, it puts in comments or anything that you tell it to. It has a ton of settings that you could mess with. I just use it like this. So for the, our posts, we wanted 20 in there for my portfolio page. We already have one post on the site, which is Hello World. So I'm going to add 19 more. That's it. And I'm going to generate. And as soon as you're done, you go to the settings on Faker Press, and I'll show you that right now. There's a one-click button, and it takes all the content away. You uninstall the plugin, and nothing is left. So while that's generating, let's go to the settings and I'll show you. So we could go to Faker Press and we go to settings. There's this just <laughs> one, I love this. The cold never bothered me anyway, let it go. And then everything is gone. So let me jump back to my site. Actually, let me go through the pages because we did not throw the menu up on that home page yet. And let me go to my portfolio page. Now, if we zoom out, well, that looks a lot different. Okay. And if we preview it in a new tab, we have this, all right? And I'll show you how quickly before we end here, I want to get a good amount of time in for some questions. I'm going to zoom over here real quick to another theme that was just released by a really good human named Andres Noren. Uh, this is in the theme repository, completely free. This is a great place to start for learning about all the things we're talking about today. But if we go to the demo and look at that. So that's his portfolio, four by three. And if we go back to our site, we have almost the same thing. So actually, let's just finish up by making ours look like that real quick. So I'll go back to my actual edit page and we'll close off the rest to make. So I, Apologies for that, intranets. So I made a brand new page called Portfolio. I changed the template to blank. And that blank template I made through the site editor. I added a group block and just threw in a query loop. And I adjusted how many posts were there, how many showed up. So now I'm going to zoom into this query loop and we'll see I have post template. So this is what's controlling each one of my blog's posts, this image, date, title. And since it's my portfolio, 
I don't want the title. I don't want the date. I do want the featured image. Okay. And now if I go back up to my query loop and I zoom back out and I update and I view my page, I have a portfolio page. And the reason I made it blank and I took the header out, you're saying, where's the navigation? So let's go back. We're going to edit the page and we'll finish up with our custom header and footer. We're going to go to our list view as always, and we see we have our group block here. So I want to put a header in before that. So we'll insert before. And I'm gonna click the plus button. And for patterns, you'll see we have headers already listed. We're going to go in here. And we're gonna put in a custom dark black pattern right here. And I need to adjust the settings on that, uh, the margin and the padding. And we'll click group. So we have our header, we have our portfolio. And so we want after that our footer. So insert after. This time I'm gonna search right from here by typing in footer. All right. So not giving me the option. Might be my Wi-Fi and or using mobile. So I'm gonna go from here and we'll pick footers. And we'll see how we have a bunch more options. And I'm gonna match that dark background at the top. And I just want a nice simple one that tells them to reach out to me. So I'm gonna click on let's connect and close that. And actually, you know what? I want this header to be sticky like that hosting site we saw earlier. So let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna make sure I'm on that group header block. And I'm gonna open up the settings on the right. I'm gonna to go to my styles here. And we're going to give it a shadow. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm going to give it a radius. Zoom back out. And under my settings here, I'm gonna to go to position and I'm going to make that sticky. And one thing to keep in mind is my internet is a little uh, wonky today. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Why I have to keep refreshing. So let me just fix this real quick by going to our group block here. And you see it's on full width, which is why there's no margins to the left or to the right. So now we're gonna zoom that back in. So now we have our margins, uh, but our text is a little too close to the sides. So I'll go to my styles. And we're going to go to my row block here. And I'm gonna give it a little extra padding by clicking the padding over. That's a little too much. So I'm going to go adjust that myself. And I'm gonna, if I click on the icon right here next to padding extra small, you'll see it tells me exactly how many pixels that is. So I want half and I'm just gonna change that to 10. And let's do the same thing real quick for our footer. So if we see here, I'm on my footer block on the group. I change my width to wide width. I come to my settings to the side for that group block. I go to the style part. 
I give it a radius and we update. So now we have a sticky header with navigation. We have a portfolio with a custom footer. And obviously, you know, it would take more than the four minutes I just took there to adjust padding margins and settings. And if we go to landscape, we'll see we have the desktop. And I'm going to stop there because we have about six minutes left and hopefully there, hopefully there's more questions and or I can jump in or show anyone anything, go over anything at the time. But we've gone over making a homepage, a contact page, and a portfolio page. And let me jump back to home because that looks nicer. All using patterns, which are all just a collection of blocks put together in an order that someone else predetermined. And as soon as you start diving in, get in there, mess around. My favorite way to do it, I'll show this for last. This is my favorite way to test things out. Let's just go to, let's just add a new post and just play around and just call it a test post. You don't have to worry about anything you're doing. You know, add some blocks, see what's, see what's here. Uh, here's some text things. I throw those in if my internet worked and you get the idea. So any questions, Wes? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, there was um, there was a bit of a discussion um, about the, the template, the blank template. Um, and I thought okay. well, maybe we could just clarify that as well, because we know we usually add the, the header and the footer template parts to our, our templates. But just to yeah. clarify for folks, the reason you added your header um, and your footer to your page, your portfolio page, is because you used the blank template. And the blank template yes. does, doesn't have anything in it. So just for folks who, who, who maybe were confused um, or were wondering about that. Um, so... Yeah, that's why you added it to your page and not your template. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and I did, apologies, I went through that uh, very quickly there at the end. So if we go, we zoom in so we can all see this for this. If we go to our pages and we check out our portfolio page, um, even though it says portfolio here, because we have the blank template, that is just telling me what page I'm on. So really, this is what's going to show on the website. Nothing above the content itself. So if I change that template, because we have a blank, that took away the header and the footer. And if I go back to default, and now I update, and we view our page, We'll see we now have two headers. So what using that blank template is, is, is a way to make a really good use case is landing pages or things that change often, right? Things you only need to use one time, that one event. So I have this one thing coming up. I don't want the menu up here that, that sells other things. I don't want um, you know, my Facebook link in the background or I just want a sales funnel. So I would create a new page. I would call my page sales funnel. I would make it a blank page and I would publish it. Now, if we view this page, you'll see it literally is blank. Like this is what that's pulling for you. So if I, now I'm on my sales funnel page and all I want is one banner, one image that sends someone somewhere. So let's call it a cover. Whoop, sorry about that. 
let's call it a cover block. Let's make that full width. Let's select our photo. Um, we have the Pelicans coming in this weekend. And we know that uh, Pelicans are awesome. So we just, that's all. We just wanna let everybody know Pelicans are awesome. We go to our styles for our, our paragraph. We make it huge, 72 pixels. And we make the text white. That looks pretty rad. Now we update. Now we view our page. And you could adjust that so that whole thing took up the entire page with no white space. So the blank template, where to use template parts and why you wouldn't. That's great. Did, Thank you. Did that help fill it in some more, Wes? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mark Andrew. That was awesome. And um, thanks, everyone, for joining today.